If you clicked on this video because you're really interested in dry bags instead, make sure to comment below because I really love to why you picked that one over a stuff sack. In this video today, guys, we're talking about why I use stuff sacks over dry bags for the most part. I have used dry bags in the past for a lot of things, but in the recent times, I've really just been using recent times. In recent, <laughs> I really just miss using a stuff sack because honestly, my new setup that I've used for a while now just does the job better. And the cons of having a dry bag just don't benefit me at all. And so I want to explain to you today why I use a stuff sack. And maybe in the comments, you tell me why you use a dry bag or why you use a stuff sack and what's worse best for you. Guys, I'm Taylor and welcome to Southern Hike. So today, let's talk about two different types of bags that are common in the backpacking community. You have dry bags, and then you have stuff sacks. Now to break it down pretty quickly, this is, uh, for the most part, I'd say 95% waterproof unless you completely submerge it. Or this right here, which is not waterproof. I would say it's water resistant if you seal it pretty well, but it's definitely not something I would get in like drenching rain or anything like that. If you put it in your pack, and make sure you put it in the right direction. So both of these are used in the community and I just want to explain today some of the pros and cons of each and what's the best way you should look at it for yourself and just want to explain why this is the way I do it and then make sure to again put in the comments what's worked best for you. So guys, one of the ones this one of the ones that have been out there for a while are dry bags. Now dry bags for like backpacking on a kayak or a canoe, I've done this before. Dry bags are vital because I have flipped in my kayak a few times and I've always made sure that my gear, if it landed in the water, was gonna float and it was also still gonna be sealed because my trip would turn miserable if it got wet. So if I'm going on a trip when I'm on a canoe or kayak, I'm gonna make sure I use dry bags because they seal up and I wouldn't submerge them, but on top of water, they float for the most part because they will trap air, give you enough time to get it out of the water and it works well to seal you up. Now, another side of that is a stuff sack. Now, to me, the biggest thing about stuff sacks is, is that they still compress when they're closed up. The Dyneema ones like Hilltop and Pats makes, they still are like, for the most part, water resistant. If you get water on the outside, it'll be fine. If you submerge it or if you float them in the water, you're definitely gonna run into some water. And if you're in a downpour, that is the other downside. Now, that the benefit of this though is it's compression. I can put my quilt or my sleeping bag in here and be able to compress it down really small, like any kind of down that's gonna compress anyways, but the bag will compress because it pushes all the air out of here because this is not completely sealed. Now, if you fill these up with anything and then wrap them, they're gonna do what their job is, is to seal. And you're gonna basically, even things like a quilt that would compress really easily, like down, is not going to compress because you trapped a lot of air in there and therefore you're taking up more room in your pack. So it definitely has its downsides compared to it being waterproof, is it taking more room up. So that's one of the biggest things about that. Now you're like, well, Taylor, what if I'm in a situation where I know I'm gonna be hitting some rain? I definitely wanna use a stuff sack because then I could risk my quilt, which could be down, which you don't wanna get wet, could definitely get wet in that kind of situation. Well. To me, I use, for the most part, use like a nylofoam, nylofoam, however you say it, nylofoam, nylofoam, whichever one it is, I use it as a uh, pack liner that's gonna seal the inside of my pack. So I don't really depend, seal the inside of my pack from the outside. I really don't depend on these bags to keep my gear dry. I use that pack liner that will basically seal the entire pack. Now, this year I've been using the Outdoor Vital Satellite Pack, and it's definitely water resistant, but not waterproof, so it can definitely take water on the inside. So I've been using a pack liner for any trip where I know I could run into rain. But at the same time, it's still easy to use this stuff sack because I can compress my quilt. I don't put my sleeping bag in this sack because it's too big, but for the most part in the summertime, I can compress my quilt in here and not have any issues because I have that pack liner and don't worry about the rain, but it also keeps it my quilt separated from all the other gear because the material my quilt is thin, I don't want to tear it on anything else in my pack. So that's why I lean towards a stuff sack. Now, sometimes when I still use a dry bag, is like my ditty bag. This I use as a ditty bag. Uh, if you watch one of our previous videos, a couple of the, our videos, we have ditty bags that we use to keep some of our odds and ends and things that we need to keep dry, like battery packs, batteries, stuff like that, any type of electronics or just first aid gear and things like that, you don't want to get wet. I'll put them all in here and this basically will take care of keeping those things dry and that way I know no matter what those things are dry and I still can wrap it down enough that you're not going to get much more compression because all of that stuff is solid items anyway so they're not going to compress like a quilt or sleeping bag would. Guys that is the one situation where I use a dry bag. Now I have an Osprey one I've used before too. I think on my Colorado trip we used this. We actually bought it when we were in Colorado because I forgot my stuff sack. So this was the only option they had at one of the stores we went to. 
to and still was able to kind of keep it in there. I didn't exactly wrap it up and seal it like you're supposed to a dry bag, but I went ahead and had it and then use it for keeping other things in on other trips. I've let people you know, borrow this also on backpacking trips when they needed to use it because you can also use this as a large food bag like we talked about last week. This works well for any type of bear country where you need to hang your food. It still will hold it all. And we, I think we used it in the Smokies, honestly, somebody else used it. So this is the two common ones that are out there. If there's any other ways you can keep your gear dry, let us know in the comments. I did a video like two years ago where I was talking about you can use a trash bag as your pack liner. That still works too. That's a quick way if you wanna do it quickly. But you can get those pack liners really cheap. I, I'll try to link it below. I think Garage Grown Gear, they sell them. And then I think Outdoor Vitals and Lightsmith, there's a couple of those. I'll link it below anyway. So guys, these are the two different types out there. These are my opinions on each and what we've used them. I'm not saying that that's the way you should use them. This is the way we believe they've worked well best for us. If you're just in the middle of trying to decide which one is best for you, I hope this video is informative to do that. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like it. If you're new here, we're Southern Hike. We do backpacking, hiking tips and tricks and tutorials. And we really would love you to join our community. Make sure to hit the subscription button and hit the notification bell because that way you can see our next video. We do a video every Thursday at six now around Eastern time and we would love to see you on the channel again. Guys, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoying this summer weather as we're burning up in the South and we will see you next week.